He is not playing today, but I'm not going to give you my starters. If it is Armani, that would be four guys who were undrafted. You got last year's two-way player, this year's two-way player. Is that maybe more the way things are happening around the league, that we're seeing guys late round picks, whatever? Or is that just hey, part of a rebuilding process or something else? Um, I think we are seeing it around the league. I think we're seeing um, <clears throat> with the – with as comfortable as teams are with the G League and with the relationship that teams have with their G League teams, it's a lot easier to get someone like that and bring them in and kind of fit them into a role and kind of have the learning process cut dramatically because they do what we do and their terminology is the same as ours. And there is a level of being comfortable with how we do things. So, um, yeah, I think that's becoming almost the norm where you can have guys who play well in the G League and maybe got to the G League because they were undrafted or whatever, but you see how they would kind of fit into how we would do things and then bring them up and uh, they continue to do the same things. Does that make it easier for an undrafted guy to show maybe he could have been or should have been? I think so. I think so. I mean... Used to be there, you know, there really wasn't the the relationship and the up and down as far as two ways and uh, G League players opportunities to come to a team that really is invested in their G League team. But there is so much investment between the Rockets and the Vipers uh, specifically that, uh, yeah, it, it, it's it's good. Because the winning streak started with you matching up with all of the smaller teams. Now, I think starting with Orlando and, and going through the stretch, of some teams with a little more size. How do you feel that the group is prepared to handle that after giving up the rebounding edge last game and, and heading into this stretch? Yeah, it's something I thought a lot about. And, um, you know, we do have the versatility to go different ways with our lineups. So um, I am concerned about the rebounding tonight, for sure, with Valanciunas out there. And his size and this team that we're playing, they're a paint team and they really do a good job on the board. So um, to have that versatility is good for me. It's been about a week since John started his ranking up period. Is there an update as far as where he's at and as far as any conversations that you've had about his role? No, no update. As far as Kevin Porter Jr., is this expected to be a long layout? Um, I don't really know. It's it's hard to say. It's kind of like a day to day thing, but um, we're gonna take our time with it. Like I said after the last game, it's gonna be important for us to get it for him to get it right, you know, and get it back to where it's not like he starts playing again and then it's back again, you know, and we're right back to square one. So we're gonna take our time for sure. You mentioned at the end of, the other night after the game that. You felt like you had a rotation now that was pretty set with Armani and Daniel House came in together. All the guys would know. How much, even philosophically, do you feel like keep things as they are as much as you can? There's always going to be an injury here and there in the season. Or once you make one change, don't worry about it. No, it is important. It's important for me. It's important for the guys to play well, to know when they're going to be playing, how long their stretch is going to be. But with injuries, some of that stuff goes out the window, but I think um, part of our success has been linked to our continuity uh, with lineups and rotation and that sort of thing. Um, but injuries can throw a wrench into it. Uh, ideally, we'd want it to be the same every night, but unfortunately, we have uh, two starters out right now, so we're kind of figuring it out. Does that mean more ball handling responsibilities for guys like Eric Gordon? Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, <laughs> him and uh, Tate is going to have to have more ball handling, and uh, Alpi's going to have to make some more plays as well. Even missing kind of you know the primary facilitator, <coughs> Kevin Porter Jr. Are you inclined to maybe call more set plays and that kind of stuff, or is the offensive principle kind of the same no matter the five guys that are out there? 
Yeah, I mean, it really depends on hopefully we get the ball up the floor quickly. And uh, when Scoot's in the game, he does a good job of that. If we're able to do that, then I can call less plays. But, um, you know, I'll probably end up calling a few more plays because we may play a little bit more slow or slower, slowly um, tonight. I know it's still a work in progress, but as far as the Shingoon and Christian pairings, if you're ultimately able to do that and there's some success, does that perhaps open up some minutes for uh, for Daniel Tice? Yeah, it does. Um, the, the figuring out a way for him to play is important to me because he is a pro. He is he helps our defense so much. He is physical, and um, you know it's not like. <laughs> It's just a, a quandary because yeah. of the situation, but he would be playing. He'd be in the, the, the rotation. He would be starting on some teams, and it's just um, kind of where we are as a group. But for him, he stays ready, and he stays professional, and um, that's gratifying as a coach, but also uh, it's important to me to find a way to play him some if possible. Yeah, I noticed the other night he was very vocal on the bench. How hard is that to do for a veteran like that to be able to, I guess, not cow when he's taken out of the rotation and still sort of same engagement? Yeah, I mean, it's hard, um, I assume, but it really just depends on what kind of guy you are, you know? And uh, he has proven to be a quality individual as well as a quality player. So, um, yeah, it's just one of those situations where, you know, where we went small and it worked out, but he has been great. And you could keep the four undrafted starters thing going. <laughs> I could. <laughs> Stephen, I didn't hear the um, the very first question. Were you referring to Kevin Porter not playing? Uh, yeah, he is not playing, okay. and um, it's a you know, day-to-day -day thing, but we're going to take our time. Also, um, uh, you may not have given this a second thought, but humor me. You're sitting here with the longest active winning streak in the NBA. What do you think about that? <laughs> I did not, <laughs> excuse me, I did not know that. Um, it feels good, especially considering where we came from, but there's been some things that led to it, and it's more about those things that led to it than the actual results. So us moving the ball and having you know, 33 assists last game, us um, getting up the amount of three point shots that we need to get up and making a good amount of the amount of those, us fighting through adversity when teams come back on us and then, um, you know, not breaking, bending, but not breaking. Those are the things that lead to ultimate success. And it's led to a five game winning streak for us, but it's much more about the process than the result. Thank you. Thanks.